Tonight, we celebrate new beginnings. As a Bay Area tradition more than 170 years in the making roars back to life. For the first time in two years, crowds once again fill the streets of San Francisco for a spectacular display of pride and pageantry in the largest celebration of its kind outside Asia. Feast your eyes on the most memorable moments and new surprises from this year's parade. Tonight, see how it all comes together and explore the humble beginnings of this world-renowned event. Now, KTVU presents the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade as we celebrate the Year of the Tiger. It's the Year of the Tiger. Hello everyone, I'm Julie Hayner. And I'm Claudine Wong. Thanks for joining us tonight. We are so excited to bring you the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade as this longtime tradition came roaring back. And this year, there were some new surprises and new participants. And for the first time ever, we had a spectacular fireworks show. Tonight, in our special parade coverage, we are going to take you to all the best moments. And we'll also show you this parade as it's never been seen before with behind the scenes stories. <laughs> And let's get the night started with the opening act, a lion dance on stilts. stands as these two lion dancers make their way down these poles. The poles range in height from 5 to 10 feet and signify mountain tops. Unbelievable acrobatic ability for these dancers to literally leap their way off the mountain. What an incredible performance by the Leung White Crane Dragon and Lion Dance Association. They never disappoint. 
And there he is, actor, director, and producer, Daniel Wu. He is the Grand Marshal of this year's parade. And here he is, lighting the ceremonial firecrackers to kick it all off. Happy New Year! It means a lot to me because I grew up in the Bay Area. I went to the Chinese New Year Parade every year as a kid. My sister was in it because she was the first runner-up in the Rose Ball pageant in 1986. Oh, so wow. I, get to, I got to stand on the street and watch her go by on a float. So today is my turn to be in the parade. So it's a, it's a really special thing for me. Wu was born in the Year of the Tiger, and that's his Lincoln Continental that he's riding in. Wu has made over 60 films in 20 years and has been using his platform to fight anti-Asian hate. Next up, we have the West Coast Lion Dance Troupe sharing the art and culture of lion dance in the Bay Area since 1988. The theme, spreading peace, prosperity and good luck to all. Dragon this year with some very special significance. We'll have more on that coming up a little later. <laughs> this is Alaska Airlines' first year as a title sponsor, and its float pretty incredible. The float shows a tiger emerging from between the mountains and out of the water. The clouds signify good fortune. And because it's the year of the water tiger, we also have waves on the side of the float as a sign of resilience. This is more than just you know, putting our names uh, out here in the community. It, it's a commitment to the community. And we want to make sure that we are an airline that is diverse, we're equitable, and we're inclusive and it represents our employees who are on this float. And here are the flight attendants with the Alaska Airlines care crew performing to the song, Higher Love. This year's honorary Grand Marshal, Shannon Lee, daughter of famed martial artist, actor, and cultural icon, Bruce Lee. She says her whole family has deep ties to the Bay Area, and it's important to be back to celebrate the return of this parade. Oh, I think it's just a wonderful thing, I mean, to have this tie with my family, with San Francisco, you know, with my culture. And I'm so pleased to be able to be celebrating, like to have a cause to celebration right now. Shannon Lee is the president of the Bruce Lee Foundation. Right now, the foundation is collaborating with the Chinese Historical Society of America in San Francisco for an exhibit called We Are Bruce Lee. It is set to open in April. Next up is the San Francisco Lesbian Gay Freedom Band, the first openly gay musical organization in the world, founded back in 1978. By city ordinance, 
it is considered the official band of San Francisco, the group says music builds bridges and says in the words of their founder, our message is music. Bands are always a big part of this parade, but for the first time this year, we have a band that is made up entirely of Chinese instruments. An in-depth look at the Great Wall Orchestra, that's coming up. It's amazing. Everyone's so talented and so happy to be here. It's really nice. Great is absolutely amazing. you got to come if you haven't been here before. <laughs> Too much fun. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. to see it come come back. I just love how it brings everyone together. It's a really great experience. We couldn't agree more. Organizers call this the biggest celebration of its kind. Welcome back to the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Here comes San Francisco Mayor London Breed. She's always excited to be a part of this parade. And we talked to her about the importance of seeing this San Francisco tradition come roaring back. It, this is unbelievable. It's amazing. The energy, the excitement. I was in Chinatown earlier today. People were everywhere. I mean, the city is coming alive again. And it's been two years of no parades and no activities. So the fact that this is the first one in a long time and we're celebrating the eye of the tiger, the tiger this year is so exciting. Resilience, courage, bravery, everything the city has gone through. I can't be happier. You see people of all different races. So many folks have came to support not just our Asian community, but just to make sure that they know that if you come for one of us, you come for all of us. Mayor Reed is the first black woman to be elected as mayor of San Francisco and was sworn in back in 2018. Next up, we have the fierce boxing tigers in their green and black, dancing to the eye of the tiger. These are students from Presidio Knoll School, which is an independent Mandarin immersion school. familiar face to our Chinese New Year coverage for the last two and a half decades, famed rock journalist Ben Fong Torres. The career of Ben Fong Torres has been remarkable. He helped start Rolling Stone magazine in San Francisco in the 70s, and he has interviewed the music greats. But that is just part of his story. Ben grew up in the Bay Area working in his family's restaurant, and he says he looked for escapes, sometimes finding them in radio, music, books. Once a year, he found an escape at the Chinese New Year Parade. Nothing beat the parade, never has and never will, to go to see a, basically a town devoted to Chinese New Year. And all the, the, the glitter, the glamour, the noise, the color, the people, and then the parade itself. So uh, that, that was always a, a great excursion uh, for us, for all of us. Ben says being a part of this parade has been something special. 
He has always given back to this community. Even after working long hours at Rolling Stone, he used to volunteer his time working for the local paper in Chinatown. He says when he was asked to host the parade back in the late 90s, he knew it was a special opportunity. I never saw myself in, in uh, that area, but right away I thought, wow, a reconnection to the, the culture that my parents were trying to drum into me. 24 or so years, five Emmys, I think, and uh, no, you don't get tired of it, partly because you're in this very special environment. And Ben is back with us, of course, for this long time tradition. And what a ride it's been <laughs> sitting next to this guy for more than 20 years, just soaking up the energy, seeing those smiling faces, and just celebrating the Chinese New Year Parade in San Francisco, which has such a long history and a treasured history in San Francisco. Uh, you probably have many favorite moments, but tell us about one that comes to mind over the past 24 years. What comes to mind is 20 years ago, Julie, and back then in 2002, Union Square was going through this renovation. And so the parade route had to be altered, and that resulted in a number of mix-ups and delays. And the Stanford Marching Band and their mascot, the Dancing Tree, uh, showed up so late they wound up following the grand finale, the, the Golden Dragon. They didn't make it on the air, but it was the first time I had ever seen a great dragon being chased by a tree. And that dragon is so beautiful, so magnificent to see. Yeah. It's one of my favorite parts of the entire parade. Ben is going to be with us throughout this broadcast tonight, so he's going to give us some behind the scenes looks at some new and long time parade participants. <laughs> And now, let's get you back to the parade and West Portal Elementary's Chinese Performing Arts Program. And they look familiar, that's because this program has made more than 25 appearances in past parades. This group filled an entire city block. At first, the Dragon Runners, with the smallest dragon chasing the pearl in a quest for immortality. The drummers are warding off evil spirits, carrying on a tradition of villages along the Yellow River in northern China. They're followed by some friendly lions, here to wish everyone a prosperous new year. Also in the group, fan and ribbon dancers dressed in traditional Chinese folk dance costumes. They're followed by stilt walkers with stilts as high as 40 inches, recreating the characters from the Chinese novel Journey to the West. The Chinese Chamber of Commerce next to make its way down the street. Eddie Yao is the president of the chamber riding in that car. This group was founded during the gold rush in 1850 and has championed entrepreneurs and economic prosperity for more than 160 years. This has been a difficult period for business in Chinatowns across the Bay Area. And as KTVU's Amber Lee tells us, in San Francisco, for so many businesses, survival means coming together as a family. Hurry beat. Chelsea Hung is owner of Washington Bakery and Restaurant in San Francisco Chinatown, a business started by her mother Tilly Zhang almost three decades ago. An unexpected life change came in 2018 after the San Francisco native moved to New York City and was working in tech. My mom gave me a call. I was like, I think I'm going to sell the restaurant and um, I kind of want to just retire. Chelsea quit her job, moved back to San Francisco, and took over the business that her mother worked hard to build. I'm so surprised, but, you know, I, I don't think they can work out. Sang says her daughter initially couldn't speak Cantonese well, but running the business has changed that. I'm so appreciated with Chelsea doing all these things and then she working so hard. It was just important to me because I wanted to continue my family's legacy as well as supporting the Chinatown community. Number 12, Chelsea Hall. 
In 2016, Chelsea was crowned Miss San Francisco Chinatown. And it was just such an amazing experience. Um, it was two weeks of really learning about my culture. Chinatown is Chelsea's second home. She feels a responsibility to keep her mother's bakery and restaurant open, having seen many longtime businesses closed in the area. Especially um, with the older generation um, not having their um, son or daughter be able to take over the family business. But it's a challenging journey made more difficult by the pandemic. Just trying to adapt to this new normal and there just seems like there's so many things against us and um, even thoughts of like maybe we, we need to close. Like, I don't know, maybe this is time, but you know, we're still here. We're still trying to survive. Surviving and helping the community at the same time. She's partnering with a nonprofit and the city to provide meals for those who need help. It's been four years since Chelsea has taken the reins of her mom's business, and despite the hardships brought on by the pandemic, she has decided to take on even more work. Her father decided to retire from his restaurant business, also here in Chinatown, so Chelsea took over last July. Dad Henry Hung has owned the well-known RNG Lounge since 1985. A Cantonese seafood restaurant that attracts locals and visitors. It was an honor when he asked and I you know, can't, can't say no to my dad. <laughs> People mostly like to come down to the basement. Hung tells me over the years he's expanded the size of his restaurant. Despite his success, he wants Chelsea to forge her own path. Do your, your own way. You don't need to follow me. He says coping with the pandemic is an invaluable lesson for his daughter. Something you learn not from the school, the life experience. Chelsea hopes to make her mark by building a larger customer base. I just want to be able to promote it more to our generation and um, you know, be on social media. Determination and resiliency are key. The big part is how you overcome those challenges, and I feel like if I'm able to do this and survive during a pandemic for both restaurants, I think I can do anything. Her gift to her family and the community. In San Francisco Chinatown, Amber Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And it's not just about the business, but also about services and tackling social issues. A message of solidarity with pictures of Vincent Chin and George Floyd on this float. The groups represented here include the Chinese Cultural Center of San Francisco, the Chinatown Community Development Center, and Unlock San Francisco, which has been serving seniors for 50 years. Cal Poly's marching band, and you could feel the energy of the crowd as this band came roaring down the street. So much fun to watch, and we still have a lot more to come. We'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. You can win round-trip airfare for two anywhere Alaska Airlines flies in the continental U.S. Go to ktvu.com slash contest now to enter. More celebrations of the Year of the Tiger right after this short break.
they uh, would be uh, a captain if they belong to a, a team with a team leader, if they belong to uh, a group of people, they might be a boss. Courageous, charismatic, and confident. Those are the characteristics of people born in the Year of the Tiger, one of the 12 animals in the Chinese Zodiac. Welcome back to the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Happy New Year! There's the Hyundai float, which is built with the theme, building a better world for tomorrow with electrification. And right in front is a robot tiger, and then behind it, you see high-tech skylines, which symbolize the power of innovation and electrification. Behind the float, we have the lively and energetic performance from students of San Francisco's Alamo Elementary School. The school has been around for 96 years. Its motto is, be a friend. And now we have the Community Youth Center of San Francisco, a group with the important work of supporting API youth and immigrants since 1970. Their entourage is made up of a truck decorated with red and gold, colors traditionally considered to be good luck in Chinese culture. And there you see their 100-foot golden dragon chasing the pearl of wisdom. The dazzling floats are always a crowd favorite in this parade, but they take months to build. KTVU's Christian Kafton has a peek behind the scenes at all the hard work that goes into taking those floats from an idea to reality. Behind these doors, a team of artists work for months to make the parade pop with color and come alive. Truckloads of lumber, hundreds of yards of LED lights, and a quarter ton of glitter are just some of the elements that go into creating the floats for San Francisco's Chinese New Year Parade. So next step is just the yeah, silver, just like, like that. Stephanie Muffson and her team of artists pour their hearts and souls into every detail of every float. First, coming up with the concept for the float with the sponsor. So I get inspired by their own messaging, their own color schemes that they're working with. And I really let that be a jumping off point where I can then run with my imagination on how can I integrate the theme of that year's Zodiac plus these colors, plus maybe this particular messaging that's important to this particular sponsor. Once the concept has been set, the hard work begins to bring that vision to life, sticking to the plan, but also carving out enough space for creativity. Definitely there will be moments of, oh, if we light it like this, it looks beautiful. Oh, if we add a little bit of you know, a little bit of extra glitter on this, or we can, you know, play around with the way that something is composed so that it really sings. Muffson says the tiger and all that it embodies, strength, courage, and determination, are a fitting symbol for the return of the parade. A, a big conversation that we had with all of the sponsors at the beginning of the design process was really activating the tiger in a way that, that really presented strength and perseverance and courage. The parade for the Year of the Ox was one of the casualties of the pandemic, canceled in 2021 when the idea of bringing together thousands of people was unthinkable. That meant the team of artists here were sidelined. Yeah, it's been, it's been a hard couple of years for the parade world, for sure. Um, you know, Chinese New Year was amazing in coming up with the public art project. We were really grateful to them for having the imagination to think outside the box and come up with a new way to celebrate. Instead of the parade, some of the artists worked on creating the Ox on Parade statues around the city to ring in the last Lunar New Year. The idea repeated again this year with the parade of tiger statues created with the help of local artists. Muffson says, Art and joy are the exact medicine everyone needs after two years of the pandemic. I think just anyone that is interested in continuing to see that exist in the world, anywhere where they can put their money, their time, their energy into helping artists continue to do what they do, whether it's us or any creative in the Bay Area. Florence Corcamas is one of the artists and says working together again, collaborating and creating is important for everyone in this room, but that it's also important for the community to come together and to celebrate.
everybody has their own personal battles in life. So to be able to come back and together as a team and make these quilts together, I mean, it's, yeah, it's healing. It's absolutely healing. All of this hard work culminating with the big reveal the day of the parade. Muffson says even then the work is not over as she and her team of artists escort the floats along the route. There is a time though in the moments before the parade actually begins with the crowds arriving, the music building and the fireworks going off. That is the moment she says she treasures. Everything gets louder and busier and that's the moment for me where like you walk down and you see all the finished floats and you feel the energy kind of rising. That's always my favorite part. All around this workshop, you see sculptures from years past. Pigs, rats, horses, dragons. I asked if that meant that they're already thinking about what next year's parade might look like. The artists here say they're so focused on just getting this year's parade perfect, they can't even think beyond the end of the month. In San Francisco, Christian Taft and KTBU, Fox 2 News. Let's take you back to the parade. Salesforce, with its parade float designed to embody the spirit of the tiger. At the front, the iconic Chinatown gate known as the Dragon Gate on Grant Avenue, representing resilience. And of course, you have the Salesforce Tower silhouette. The flower signifying growth and prosperity, and the clouds meant to uplift the AAPI community. Happy New Year's! Happy New Year's! Happy New Year's. Students of Jose Ortega Elementary celebrating the Year of the Tiger. Lots more floats, lion dancers, and performances coming up. I like all the bands. The what dancers. Like? Yeah, the lion dancers. dancers. I'm having a good time. Thank you. Yay! <laughs> We'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Every night in the Bay Area, news breaks. A bold crime in a crowded place. Every night, decisions are made. Just voted and approved an emergency ordinance. Watch the stories that matter every day when you watch the 10 o'clock news every night. This all happened just over my shoulder. The winds are going to kick up. The team you trust bringing you the news you need on air and live streaming free on the Fox 2 News app. Watch the 10 o'clock news from KTVU Fox 2. KTVU has been a part of this parade since it started its broadcast back in the late 80s. And our KTVU family has always enjoyed being a part of this incredible event. I've spent 22 years in the broadcast booth and I have enjoyed watching every minute of the crowds, the smiling faces, and we did it rain or shine. And of course I did it with Ben Fontoura sitting side by side, enjoying the parade moments from the broadcast booth in the heart of Union Square in downtown San Francisco for all those years. So much fun. And I've been so lucky to see this parade from so many fantastic vantage points on the ground for the last several years, talking with all the parade goers and participants. And then before that, on that KTVU trolley, which was really such an amazing way to be a part of an event that I've watched since I was just a kid. And this year, KTVU anchors, reporters, and staff, along with some of their friends, got into a double-decker bus.
We saw so many of their fun pictures as they made their way along the streets of San Francisco. And our KTVU family is thrilled to see this longtime tradition return. We love the parade, but since we didn't get to have it during the pandemic, it means more now. Just like everything else, everything else means more. It's something I look forward to because growing up as a little girl, I would watch this from the street or at home, so it's exciting to be a part of it. Oh, it feels fantastic. This is like a tradition for all of us at Channel 2. We come every year and we celebrate Chinese New Year and we all get together and it's one of these great times uh, where the morning people, the weekend people, the day side people, uh, the night side people all kind of get together and we've all seen each other's work all year long and this is one of those times when we actually get together in person and get to hang out together and it's just one of those great days that we absolutely love. All of us absolutely love it. This is my first bus parade with KTVU and I can't believe it. It's, it's amazing. Everybody's here at the same time. There's people I've met. There's people I know really well and there's people who I've only seen on television who I'm getting to know personally for the first time and it's, it's an incredible experience. This parade has a long history that stretches back to the 1800s, but through the years, the parade has and continues to be about family, community, and pride. It truly is an American celebration. In its long history in the Bay Area, the Chinese New Year Parade has been a place for tradition, for celebration, and for family. You know, the parade, I think when we look back in the history of the parade and there were uh, Chinese participants in a July 4th parade in the 1850s. And I think is that the Chinese wanted to be part of the community, and so they, they participated and create, created this parade. And through the years, they created their own parade on their own celebration, rather than just a July 4th. But for the Chinese American community, the parade has also provided something more. It is uh, very important. Uh, as a Chinese American, because we have this big parade, we get a lot of attention. This is our soapbox once a year when we can interpret our history, our culture, and our traditions. And because of the parade, teachers all around the country says, oh, it's that time of the year. It's time to bring out the curriculum about Chinese and the railroad <laughs> and all the other things. Because without this, we won't have that kind of attention awareness. It really always has been a big event. Check out this crowd, estimated at 140,000 in 1953, the first year it was open to all. It grew even more when the Chinese Chamber of Commerce took it over in 1958. Both Wayne Hu and David Lay have spent a lifetime with this parade, from participants to parade directors, and they've watched it continue to grow when KTVU started broadcasting it in 1987. Today, it is considered the largest celebration of its kind in the world. Now, Hong Kong has one. In fact, they hire Don Whiteley, who, who was the uh, our consultant for this parade, starting at about uh, 1984, 85. So Hong Kong looked to San Francisco and said, looked what are you doing? Looked to San Francisco <laughs> for this Lunar New Year parade and Don went there with all these Chinese design. And Hong Kong says, no, we want your American bands. We want your Western looking floats. We know how to do Chinese. They wanted the Western side of the parade. A Chinese American tradition and a Bay Area staple, which through the years has always been about community. It is very important that it reflects what we're doing in our community. So the Chinese schools, I mean, not as big as it was before, but Chinese schools used to be huge and they all participated. Uh, there are uh, a Boy Scouts is an American thing, but they participate. So it represents this both, both sides of our community. Yes, the old and the new. And while the parade last year was canceled due to the pandemic, people who love it say bringing it back, especially in the wake of incidents of AAPI hate, feels more important than ever. Well, what they see is a awareness that the Chinese were here for a long time and is impactful. What they don't see is the deeper culture they end up with I think it's important to bring back a tradition. The tradition continues. And so even my grandkids think, oh, this is our parade. And I think that is an important link between generations. 
Okay, it's time now to take you back to the parade. Here come the Boy Scouts, Troop 12, one of the few Boy Scout troops in America that have a marching band. and flag dancers, the Lincoln Middle School marching band from Alameda making its way down the parade route right now. Next up, T-Mobile's colorful float. And as you can see, the float reads, we stand with you. It has another depiction of the iconic Chinatown Gateway Arch, and guarding that arch, two tigers, representing the strength, courage, and bravery of the Bay Area's AAPI community. Yao Gongmun Kung Fu Dragon and Lion Dance Association USA making its 46th appearance in the San Francisco Chinese New Year Parade. A large group with multiple lions putting on a spectacular show for the crowd. This group has won more than 300 awards and trophies in martial arts competitions. They've also won 16 national lion dance championships. Here come the students of Alice Fong Yu Alternative School, the nation's first Chinese immersion public school named after the first Chinese American teacher in San Francisco. The children have tiger ears and tiger tails and are using fans as they perform the song Dynamite by the K-pop group BTS. <laughs> We have more of the parade coming up, including a closer look at a moving tribute from one of the opening performances. But first, some more Lunar New Year traditions. New clothes symbolize hope, and new haircuts can be an important part of starting the new year off with a fresh start. Cut the old hair and then for the good, for the new year's day, the whole year is good luck. We'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. I'm Crystal Lee, and I'm proud to be your Miss Chinatown USA 2022. I'm from Castro Valley, California, and I'm an administrative professional. Lunar New Year is a special time of the year, a 
time for family, a time for renewal, and a time to celebrate with all the smiling faces at the Chinese New Year Parade. It is an honor to be part of this event. A message from Miss Chinatown, Crystal Lee. We'll see her making her way down the parade route as we continue our special coverage of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. This parade is spectacular, and yet when you look closer, you find so many more incredible stories. Earlier in the parade, you saw the West Coast Lion Dance Troupe performing. As KTVU's Amber Lee tells us, the group made a special tribute to a young Bay Area boy. The West Coast Lion Dance Troupe moves to the rhythm of the drum without missing a beat. Despite some members not performing for nearly two years due to the pandemic, on this day, Wolf House Senior Housing's Courtyard in San Francisco is their stage. This is part of our culture and that uh, we're here to share it with everybody. Tony Shu founded the dance troupe in 1988. He passed on his love for the art of Chinese lion dancing to many students, including his two sons. Ever since I could walk, uh, it was kind of always a thing that we did. I know one of our memories is just picking up a laundry basket and pretending it was a lion head and walking around the house and pretending that we were lion dancing, we were performing. Added excitement that they are once again performing for the Chinese New Year Parade 2022 after the event's cancellation last year due to the pandemic. Almost feel like it's doing it from the beginning again. Just seeing um, how the people react, right? Um, how excited they get whenever we, you know, we come out. Many troop members have been together for decades. Team leader Nikki Wu tells me she joined the group 23 years ago as a teenager. This is a really big part of my life. It's like a second family to me. This is the 34th year the West Coast Lines Dance Troupe is part of the Chinese New Year Parade. This year, a new attraction, a dragon named for a little boy killed suddenly and senselessly. The, the name of our dragon is Jasper, named after Jasper Wu, who was killed by a stray bullet. In November, the toddler was caught in the crossfire sitting in a car his mother was driving on a freeway in Oakland. His life was so short, not even two years on earth, and I want to extend his life. In January, Shu held a dedication ceremony which Jasper's parents attended. The father signed his name on the Jasper dragon. Whenever we use this dragon, we will always remember him. Bringing hope to Jasper's family and the community during difficult times by sharing the joy and color of the Chinese culture. So they will roam around this village. Shu tells Chinese folk tales behind the lion dance to this audience at Kojira Assisted Living and Memory Care in Sonoma. Sleeping lion routine. Uh, basically, the lions, they drank some wine, got a little tipsy and kind of took a little nap. <laughs> Education with humor. Shu explains the meaning of people giving red envelopes to the lion and the lion spitting out lettuce at the audience. Whoever the lettuce hits will receive good luck. I think it's a really good feeling to be able to celebrate with everyone in the community and even coming together with our team is a really big deal. Community more important than ever. Roaring back in the year of the tiger with the heart of a lion dancing at various venues with the annual goal of performing at the Chinese New Year Parade. Amber Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And before the parade, the West Coast Lion Dance Troupe held this special ceremony to honor Jasper Wu. debut in the Chinese New Year Parade, the Immortals Lion Dance Troupe from the city of Los Angeles. The 
group was established in the early 1960s with the mission of keeping Chinese culture alive by passing down the tradition of lion dancing to future generations. To this day, several of the original members still perform with their children and grandchildren. And here comes Comcast. The float's theme is connecting people to the moments that matter most. We see a strong and determined tiger facing the archway, ready to face the new year head on with a sense of hope. And the archway is adorned with festive lanterns. We also see water elements for the year of the water tiger. the Comcast crew is the Richmond High School Marching Band. Stay with us. Special coverage of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade continues next. You can win round-trip airfare for two anywhere Alaska Airlines flies in the continental U.S. Go to ktvu.com slash contest now to enter. More celebrations of the Year of the Tiger right after this short break. The Bay Area, home of sports dynasties and a wealth of championships. Seriously, is there something in the water? Where else do you find a giant who smashed the baseball record books? Or a sharpshooter whose range is the entire gym? He just kills you in a million ways. And a man so fast that... Ricky's acceleration was pretty frightening. I'm Joe Fonzi. Join me for a look at the once-in-a-lifetime Bay Area athletes who rose to the absolute pinnacle of their respective sports. Sunday at 10 on KTVU Fox 2. was contagious as the Lions got up close and personal with the crowd. <laughs> These lion dancers teasing the crowd a bit in one of our favorite moments. I loved it. Oh. it feels like the city's back. It feels like really good. I mean, it feels safe. Very And exciting. yeah, and it feels like festive and happy. Great way to start off the new year. 
Welcome back to the second hour of KTDU's special presentation of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. I'm Claudine Wong. And I'm Julie Hayner. This rich Bay Area tradition continues. This hour, we will see Miss Chinatown make her way down the parade route, more spectacular floats, and even a tribute to Star Wars. Not your average group of elders paying tribute to Chinatown's golden nightclub era, the Grant Avenue Follies. This group was formed 18 years ago by four original showgirls. They first performed as part of a fundraiser, but had such success they kept going and recruited more members along the way. And the Grant Avenue Follies still have a big following today. students from the Chinese Immersion School at the Avila in San Francisco, doing a dance routine with flags in traditional Chinese costumes. Prosperity in the new year. That is the theme for Bank of America's float. It features a blue tiger representing the year of the water tiger. There are gold coins symbolizing blessings of good fortune and a wave of prosperity. And the red lanterns ushering in warmth and light in the new year. You may have seen these cars around town. Cruise is based in San Francisco. Its mission is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and reliance on gas-powered vehicles with its all-electric fleet. Cruise has been a big supporter of the San Francisco Marin Food Bank, helping deliver more than 1.9 million meals to people in need. Winning San Ramon Valley High School Marching Wolves are making their first appearance in this parade. Let's take a listen. And a very special addition to the Chinese New Year Parade this year. We have four Star Wars costume groups representing both the light and the dark sides of the Force. First, we have the Saber Guild Temple Octu doing lightsaber choreography. And right behind them, we have the Rebel Legion Endor base. There you see Rebel fighters and Ewok, and even Princess Leia has joined the group. These groups are all nonprofits made up of volunteers. And this group, definitely stronger together. We have another member of the Good Guys group, the Mandalorian Works Costume Club. We need the good guys because right behind them we have the 501st Legion, also known as Vader's First. By the way, all of these costumes are owned by the participants. They are so accurate, they could have stepped out of a movie screen. In fact, some of the participants and their costumes were used in the filming of The Mandalorian and the crowd loving it, giving a few waves to the stormtroopers and Darth Vader and the Emperor. And there's Big Red, the lucky supermarket shopping cart rolling on in ahead of its float. Lucky California is paying tribute to the Chinese kitchen god. The pouring teapot symbolizes respect, family, and hospitality. And the oranges, dragon fruit, and mangosteen symbolizing good luck, prosperity, and wealth. And 
These are the students of West County Mandarin School, an immersion elementary in West Contra Costa County. They're performing a fan dance. Sifu Meng's Kung Fu Wushu Academy brings the art of Kung Fu to Hollywood and to mainstream America. This group brings us a choreographed routine. After the break, stay with us. <laughs> we'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Intricately created masterpieces. It looks as if it's a painting. Epic chain reactions. <laughs> and heart racing drama. You have one hour. Wednesday, March 9th, Fox brings you Domino. Welcome to Domino Masters. This is so stressful. Oh. My heart is in my throat. We're here to build and knock things down. Literally the biggest dream of mine. We live Domino Masters. After the Masked Singer, coming Wednesday, March 9th, the box. This is really wonderful. We're coming out of Omicron now and just seeing everyone come out, all walks, you know, to enjoy the parade and celebrate the new year and such a rich part of San Francisco's history and it's really great. So nice to see people back along the parade route this year after a two year hiatus. Welcome back everyone to KTVU's special coverage of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Health care has been front and center in the past two years, and San Francisco's Chinese Hospital has been working hard to serve the community. As KTVU's Henry Lee found out, the history of this hospital runs deep. Chinese Hospital in the heart of San Francisco's Chinatown. It opened back in 1899 as a dispensary as a result of anti-Asian discrimination. When they were sick, they were actually not allowed to go to the mainstream hospitals. They we're united and say, let's build our own. Fast forward to today, hospital CEO Jen Zhang says so much has changed, yet some things stay the same. They blame Chinese for bringing in or spread uh, tuberculosis, remember? And then now, 120 years later, they blame uh, uh, Chinese for bringing in uh, COVID. Zhang recently gave me a tour of the hospital on Jackson Street. She says it's the only independent hospital left in San Francisco. It offers medical, surgical, and specialty care, and also has a 24-hour emergency room. Some rooms boast scenic views. 
Each floor has its own unique pastel color. The second floor is peach. Yeah, so this is a skew uh, uh, nursing facility that it was built uh, but not opened uh, in 2016. When the coronavirus first showed up in 2020, the state needed more beds quickly. The hospital helped out. So we quickly uh, get this uh, uh, floor licensed to, so we could take patients from uh, Zuckerberg uh, uh, San Francisco General Hospital. Then Assemblymember David Chu helped out with the licensing. He also got all three of his COVID shots here. But so much was unknown when COVID first reared its head. I could say it's a nightmare, actually. But the hospital was able to limit the number of COVID cases with an education and prevention campaign. It set up a trilingual hotline in English, Mandarin, and Cantonese. It offered COVID testing. They got calls from worried people across the country. But even in San Francisco, the anti-Asian discrimination was harder to fend off. Our employees were received a lot of, uh, you know, when they take uh, public transportation, they were yelled at and, and tell them to, to, to go back to China. Zhang says the science is clear. Coronavirus is a virus. It can infect anybody, uh, regardless of your color and it had nothing to do with Chinese, right? So it's not right to call it a Chinese virus. And Chinese hospital is at the forefront in the ongoing fight against COVID. There are so many Chinese or Asian providers uh, out there, fine line workers out there fighting against uh, coronavirus, right? And then, uh, so we are very much part of the uh, contributor, actually. Chinese hospital, despite its name, welcomes patients of all backgrounds and walks of life. That is part of their mission to help a community that is diverse here in San Francisco. In San Francisco, Henry Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And let's get back to the parade. And here come the workers of the SFMTA, riding in a San Francisco icon, the cable car, of course. A school with a mission to provide quality Mandarin education. First through fifth graders at Friends of Mandarin Scholars are performing a choreographed drum routine. And here comes Recology, celebrating more than 100 years of service in the city of San Francisco. Recology is on the front lines, helping reduce the amount of trash going into landfills through its recycling and composting programs. And some antique trucks as well, old red and green demartinis, which were used to hold trash back in the 1940s. And we also have Daisy the Dragon, made all out of recycled materials. She really surprised one fan who thought he had already seen the best of the parade. The big lion head, mostly. That was my favorite. Oh, look at this guy. And this dragon right now. Best night ever. And now here come the cute little tigers of San Francisco's Yikwo Elementary School. And Bart celebrating the Year of the Tiger with this decked out Bartmobile. And another parade veteran, the Chungai Dance Troupe, showing us tricks with the Chinese yo yo. Yeah, the yo-yos just went up, and I don't know how they did that. I'm not sure either. The traditional Chinese yo-yos are made from wood and bamboo with slits on the side that make a humming sound. We also have some lion dancers. with a very cute little lion in the middle. Oh. 
Up next, San Francisco's Star King Elementary School. You see a dragon zigzagging down the parade route. Followed by some colorful fan dancers. and some drummers showcasing the strength and energy of the students. Up next, the U.S. Banks Float featuring the Great Wall Youth Orchestra, making its debut in the Chinese New Year Parade. I talked to the orchestra's music director and some of his young musicians. I'm with Laney College music professor Victor Su, who recently took over as the music director of the Great Wall Youth Orchestra from his mom, Sherlyn Chu, who founded it. Victor, tell us about the orchestra. Well, the beginning, it started like it was just a typical music program at a public school for elementary, and that's where my mom taught in um, Lincoln Elementary in Oakland Chinatown. And as she noticed that the kids were getting better and better eventually, and she realized that she just couldn't be at all these different places at once. And so she formed a Saturday program for all the alumni from that elementary school to come and practice together, because she was already adjunct faculty at this college. Now, your mom uh, loves classical and Chinese opera music, and so her students would play some of that. Yours seems to be more contemporary. You range from those classical pieces all the way to Bruno Mars and Katy Perry. How did that happen? I'm a pop music fanatic. Uh -huh. So, and I remember an old teacher that I had, like, if you don't teach your students something that you're passionate about, passionate about you're really doing a disservice to the students. And also, it's just, you know, people always have this image that Chinese instruments are ancient and they're old and, and you know, that it's from the past and it's not. So I, in order for me to have students identify that this is their music and take ownership of it, they have to be able to relate to it. Um, I don't want them to think that Chinese music is what their parents listen, only what their parents listen to or only what their grandparents listen to. Now, not all the students are Chinese. It's not limited to Chinese, is it? No, everyone's welcome to join our program. We welcome all ages, all ethnicities. Do these students come with a range of zero experience to actually having learned an instrument in school? And, and if so, how do they then uh, get matched to a dulcimer or a Chinese flute or a Chinese violin? The majority have no experience on Chinese instruments. They probably will take a band program at their middle school or high school. Um, they might have like some private lessons on piano or something, but for Chinese instruments, I think the majority, we are their first experience. My name is Christine and I play the Erhu. A simpler way to think of it is kind of like a violin, but instead it's two strings, and you don't put it on like in between your neck and your shoulder. It kind of like rests on your thighs. Mm. Have you ever been to like Chinatown and you've seen like those old people, like those old man on the side of the street playing like a tune or something? That's what I play. And what are you learning, or what do you hope to learn from being in this class and in the youth orchestra? Um, I hope to learn about just more about like the Chinese culture um, coming from you know being an immigrant myself I think it's really beneficial to learn about the Chinese culture through this way and it allows me to connect to my culture. How's that going to be for you to be in the Chinese New Year Parade? Um, I'm pretty excited I've never been on the float before so that will be something new that I've seen it on TV and stuff so this would be a new experience for me. 
What's it been like to prepare your students for the first ever appearance by the Great Wall Youth Orchestra in a Chinese New Year parade? It's been pretty exciting. Congratulations, Victor, on your work and on the Great Wall Youth Orchestra and for being in the Chinese New Year parade for the first time ever. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year parade. This one, so you know, called Ningo. Uh, That's the tangerine. Dai gut, dai lei means uh, we'll get a fortune and happiness in the future. Remembering our ancestors and honoring the, the, those that have passed in our family because we still believe that they look after us. They bring us luck. Celebrations of the new year often center around food. And during the holiday period, you may notice specialty items at bakeries and at markets. Welcome back to the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. The Chinese New Year Parade has a long and proud history, but the story of the Chinese American community is also one of struggle, racism, and perseverance. KTVU's Greg Lee takes a deeper look. The vibrancy and cultural significance of today's Chinatown is the result of generations of strife and resiliency. And throughout all the different sort of uh, years that we've been here as a people, um, you know, this community, this place, Chinatown, has been, I think, absolutely positively the anchor uh, for what kind of keeps us whole as a community. To understand Chinatown's future, you must grasp its past, a past riddled with racism and discrimination. Justin Hoover is the executive director of the Chinese Historical Society of America. He says many push and pull factors led to the first wave of Chinese immigrants coming to the U.S. Global issues like famine and uh, earthquakes and storms that drove people away from the Guangzhou, Guangdong area. Canton, also in northern China, but less, to a lesser degree, and drew them to the west coast of the United States here. So the pull effects were things like a new land, possible, uh, the possibility of money, you know, the gold rush was on in uh, 19, 1849. The, the Chinese, I think, were part of the fabric of creating the West. And Malcolm Young is the executive director of the Chinatown Community Development Center. He says Chinese immigrants not only came for the gold rush, but for labor. They worked in mines, railroad yards, agriculture, opened businesses in Chinatown, and more. As the community grew, so did anti-Chinese sentiment. The amount of adversity that I think uh, uh, Chinese and A Asians in general have faced um, isn't just virulent racism, it's not just a feeling, it was actually laws on the books. Threats of violence. Uh, and also there were taxes that were put on the Chinese, specifically only Chinese, such as like the foreigner mining tax. And this was a tax that uh, made it preventatively expensive for many of the miners to continue mining. The laws and violence against Chinese spiraled into the Chinese Exclusion Act, first signed in 1882. It banned all immigration of Chinese laborers and prevented those already here from becoming citizens. You know, it's an arbitrary form of, of, of detainment. And uh, in Angel Island, it was dehumanizing. From 1910 to 1940, 175,000 Chinese immigrants were detained and subject to mistreatment and strict interrogation at the Angel Island Immigration Station. Born out of the Exclusion Act, immigrants were kept in detention barracks for sometimes months at a time. Their stories of anguish etched into the wooden walls. At that time, the Chinese is always not welcome. Calvin Ong was detained for nearly six months. 
During this time, Chinese immigrants would come to the U.S. through Angel Island with false documents claiming to be the children of Chinese people already in this country. They would be called paper sons and paper daughters. They were so um, in love with the concept of America that they were willing uh, to take that risk of making up an entirely new life, an entirely new history, going through this detention period. In 1943, the Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed. Young wants to remind people, through all the racist and discriminatory treatment, Chinese Americans stood up and fought for equality. And between 1882 and about 1920, you'll actually look in the federal court records and you'll see there are more Chinese cases than virtually any other kind of case. And in many ways, uh, the Chinese actually shaped immigration law, um, you know, frankly, I think for the better because of how much pushback they had. In the present day, that spirit remains. Through the dual pandemics of COVID-19 and Asian hate, Chinatown continues to persevere, standing up for culture, community, and coming generations. We've always understood that there's a place for us here in this country. There's a place for us here in the state. There's a place for us here in San Francisco. Uh, and we've never really stopped fighting for that place. And out of that, I think, comes a resilience. Greg Lee, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And let's get back to the parade. The Gen Ryu Arts Group celebrating Japanese culture with a taiko drum performance. Francisco's Aptos Middle School Lunar New Year Parade Club made a return this year. We are seeing some fan dancers. And students performing a dance telling the story of the Chinese dragon and its hunt for the Pearl of Wisdom. Sing Tao's daily float is rolling down the street. They are one of the largest daily Chinese language newspapers worldwide. Their first international office was opened here in San Francisco over 50 years ago, and it continues to serve the Bay Area's Chinese American community today. Here come the students of St. Ignatius College Preparatory's Asian Students Coalition. Such an incredible event, and there were a lot of events leading up to the big night. The flower market fair made its return this year with everything you needed to welcome in the Lunar New Year. And six tiger statues were on display in San Francisco for a month. As part of the celebrations, they are now being auctioned off by the Chinese Chamber of Commerce to support a number of local nonprofits. You can win round trip airfare for two anywhere Alaska Airlines flies in the continental U.S. Go to KTVU.com slash contest now to enter. More celebrations of the Year of the Tiger right after this short break. It's good luck, it's happiness. So when someone gives you happiness, you want to take it. 
There are a lot of red envelopes being handed out during the Chinese New Year. Those envelopes contain money and well wishes, just one of the many traditions during the Lunar New Year. Welcome back everyone to the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Here comes Caesar's float, featuring Kai Shen, the god of wealth. He is wearing a colorful robe, and he's surrounded by gold coins and a pair of magnificent dragons. He bestows wishes of abundance and good fortune. And here is San Francisco's only competitive public high school band, Philip Burton High's marching band, the Pumas, performing the Eye of the Tiger. A focus on mental health during what's been a difficult two years for many of us. We have Rams Inc. next, or Richmond Area Multi-Services, focusing on providing important mental health services to the Asian American community in the city's Richmond district. State lawmakers, city leaders, and first responders were all part of the pre-parade lineup this year. We also saw a special performance from the San Francisco Police Department's Lion Dance Group, all made up of sworn officers. the Chinese Historical Cultural Project made its first parade appearance. KTVU's Jesse Gary introduces us to this group from the South Bay and tells us how its members are keeping their ancient history and culture alive. San Jose's Chinese American Historical Museum. It's a 30-year-old doorway to the city's past and rich Chinese history. So here we have our digital floor. Director Brenda Wong says the two-floor space in History Park holds artifacts from the five Chinatowns that have dotted the city's landscape, stretching from the 1860s to the 1930s. And we wanted to make sure that um, the community at large would know about the Chinese, know about who we were. If the historical museum is the physical center of the South Bay's Chinese culture, then its heartbeat is this man. I want to show you something right behind. At 81 years old, Nathan Louie has been slowed by the clock, but he's still inching forward on the path to lasting change. His two-story house in the heart of San Jose is also a museum, packed with pictures and statues, clocks and memorabilia, dragons, and his prized imperial robes. And it has lots of dragon motif. All collected during a lifetime of advancing the cause of inclusion. There is progress, but after Trump, and the Asian people are being picked on, uh, as you can see, especially when they think we're the cause of the coronavirus, only because they think we're not part of America. But you are part of America. Yes, but other people do not have the same feeling. Louis was born in 1940, the year of the dragon. Growing up in San Francisco, he worked in his family store at California and Grant, he balanced between two cultures, American and Chinese, and suffered slights and insults due to his heritage. But Louis says he finds strength in his Chinese roots, his name means thunder, and the one who supports his country. The annual Chinese New Year's Parade was a positive experience of reconnecting with his culture and history. It brings a lot of warm memory that this is part of my childhood and part of my growing up. It's a time for me to feel that here I am, I'm part of society, I'm part of the, the cultural revolution that's going on. The CHCP makes its first appearance in this year's Chinese New Year's Parade. Participants say the attention garnered from a larger and broader audience will help them in their mission of educating the masses. We just wanted to 
let people have a connection between our history and our culture. From the brick and mortar of a building reproduced from the city's past to a home that houses the treasures of a lifetime, all parts of a path that brings families and communities closer together and closer in understanding. It's the pride of being Chinese during a very special holiday. Hopefully it brings about a better time. On assignment in San Jose, I'm Jesse Gary, KTVU, Fox 2 News. And let's go now back to the streets of San Francisco. The API Coalition doing important work of fighting for equitable policies and resources for the community. Here's a look at their float. At the top, you see California's Attorney General Rob Bonta and his wife, East Bay State Assembly member Mia Bonta. This year, the API Coalition teamed up with the Civil Leadership USA Foundation and 50 API elected officials from the Bay Area to encourage unity and raise awareness to anti-Asian hate crimes. And here are the students of Argonne Elementary School's Chinese after-school program performing a traditional fan dance. Next up, cadets from the Oakland Military Institute, College Preparatory Academy, and they are marching in formation. A float dedicated to the arts. This is the U.S. Chinese Dance Association, the Huixing Arts Group San Francisco. Their float celebrating spring romance through poetry from the Tang Dynasty consider the golden age of Chinese culture. Coming up, we introduce you to Miss Chinatown, a Bay Area native. And they are a staple and a fan favorite at every Chinese New Year parade with the grand finale, the illuminated Golden Dragon. This has been great. This is so much fun and the perfect weather. I'm coming from China and yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> We'll be right back with more of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Welcome back to the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. We are nearing the very end of the parade and what a spectacular comeback it has been. Here comes Asian Inc's cable car. For 50 years, the nonprofit has been fighting for economic equality for all. Happy Chinese Year, everybody. Great prosperity, great health, and I wish everybody the best year. The queen of this parade, Miss Chinatown USA 2022, Crystal Lee of Castro Valley, surrounded by her court. Her chariot, the Thunder Valley Casino Resort float with a giant replica of her sparkling crown. To be Miss Chinatown is to be an ambassador for the Chinese American community, and I hope to be a bridge for all the Chinatowns and all the rest of the communities in the United States to show that we are resilient and we are strong, and of course, we're here to support each other, that we can overcome any circumstances. And Crystal was a part of the nationwide competition and was crowned in San Francisco on February 12th. She says she's a passionate event planner who loves to organize cultural events to share her heritage. And now we have the UC Davis Marching Band. 
Established in 2019, it is the successor to the student-run California Aggies marching band. This is the moment we've been waiting for. The Lions of the Lone White Crane Dragon and Lion Dance Association getting into place for the finale. Let's watch. off as the golden dragon slowly makes its way down the street.
is a beautiful sight and the energy just electric. The 268 foot golden dragon was carried by hundreds of dancers. And while we have heard firecrackers throughout this parade, nothing matches the firecrackers that are lit at the end. And for the first time ever, we didn't just get firecrackers to end this incredible event, we got a spectacular fireworks show. The sky exploded over Union Square. Safe to say this fireworks show did not disappoint. right underneath it and we didn't know it was going to happen but it was so beautiful it was awesome and i thought they were going to end and they just kept going and i was like oh my god <laughs> blown away honestly fabulous i love it oh fantastic it's like fourth of july it was amazing <laughs> wow what an incredible fireworks show the year of the tiger definitely one to remember what a comeback and you could feel the emotion and really the joy from the crowd because this really has been a tough couple of years. And to bring back this long time Bay Area tradition meant the world. Such a Bay Area treasure. And that will wrap up our special coverage of the Alaska Airlines Chinese New Year Parade. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night, everybody. There's a lot of good reasons for being excited about the USFL. It's pro football. With all of the formations, motions, blitzes, everything that you would expect in a professional football game. Fans are going to see an exciting brand of football. Expect to see a lot of points scored. The players that you're dealing with here are elite professional athletes. Playmaking ability, toughness, do what it takes to win football games. They're going to play with passion, being smart, being fast, and being physical. Football is the best sport there is. And to be the head coach of a professional football team is really exciting. I'm excited for the players, for the staff, but most importantly, I'm excited for the fans.
Every night in the Bay Area, news breaks. A bold crime in a crowded place. Every night, decisions are made. Just voted and approved an emergency ordinance. Watch the stories that matter every day when you watch the 10 o'clock news every night. This all happened just over my shoulder. The winds are going to kick up. The team you trust bringing you the news you need. On air and live streaming free on the Fox 2 News app. Watch the 10 o'clock news from KTVU Fox 2. The Bay Area, home of sports dynasties and a wealth of championships. Seriously, is there something in the water? Where else do you find a giant who smashed the baseball record books? Or a sharpshooter whose range is the entire gym? He just kills you in a million ways. And a man so fast that... Ricky's acceleration was pretty frightening. I'm Joe Fonzie. Join me for a look at the once-in-a-lifetime Bay Area athletes who rose to the absolute pinnacle of their respective sports. Sunday at 10 on KTVU Fox 2.